Arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord God Most High. What a great day, what a great time that we live in. God's glory is with us, His presence is with us, and the church is marching on. Hallelujah. So rejoice in the Lord, I say. And again, I say rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for joining me again today at this broadcast of Arise and Shine. To God be the glory who has kept us in the air for almost getting to three years now. And please take your little mobile phone and take a picture when the info comes on the screen so you can be able to communicate with us. Just take a picture of the information, of the address and emails and Facebook and WhatsApp. We would like to hear from you. Give us a little testimony of how this broadcast has been blessing you. We really want to know the impact and, the, uh, and have an understanding of how much people are really being blessed through this broadcast. Hallelujah. It is our joy and pleasure by God's grace to come to your home and to share the word of God with you. And let God use us to be a blessing to you. Father, we rejoice in you and worship. And we thank and adore you. Father, bless the audience, Lord, that watch this message today. Anoint me, Lord, and use me. Glorify your wonderful name. And uh, there is somebody, you are actually a woman in your 40s. And you've been so much tempted that you are almost turning away from your faith. You are trying to abandon your faith in Christ because of pressure and temptation. I speak to you by the Holy Spirit. Please don't do it. Let the grace of God arrest you. God has not forsaken you. He's not mad against you. He wants to restore you and bless you. Please, just hold on a little while and you will see the glory of God in your life. Praise God. Let's go ahead and read something in the Bible today. Let's begin with Psalm 27. And it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Speaking today on what I call the lion and the rose. The Lord is our strength. He is our ability. He is our power. We have no might of our own. You cannot live the Christian life or obey God's word or keep his commandments by your own strength and ability. The Lord is our strength. He is our ability, our power, our dunamis, our ability to carry out what is that right. So the Lord is our strength. Say with me, the Lord is my strength. Now say, Lord, you are my strength. Hallelujah. There also in um, verse chapter 46 of Psalms, and we can see you, the Bible repeating the sentence here. In verse 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength. The word again, strength, ability, might. He is our strength. He is the one that empowers us, gives us the strength, the energy, the force, the power that we need, the authority, the dominion. He is our strength. And he is our ever-present help in the time of need. That means the Lord will supply you the strength you need in the very moment you need it. Say with me, the Lord will supply me the strength I need in the very moment I need it. This is your moment of strength. This is your hour of power. God wants to empower you. God wants to enable you. God wants to infuse into you and I in this end time his own ability. We are surrounded on every corner, on every side. 
with everything negative and discouraging and tiring. And um, it, it, the, 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 the world around us is negative. The force, the power, the energy in the world is negative. It is contrary to the power and the strength of God. So we have to, in this end time, we must learn how to draw, how to tap, how to receive divine strength in our moments of need. If you depend on your own ability, depend on your own strength, you're going to give up. Because the pressure can come from all sides. The enemy will try to attack you and try to overwhelm you with pressure in your mind, in your soul, in every area. And he will try to overwhelm you until you just cave in, until you say, oh God, I cannot take it anymore. This is too much for me. This is too much. You can just cave in and say, God, I, I can't continue. I am tired. I can no more resist. Maybe it is temptation. Maybe it is sin. Maybe it is financial pressure or pressure from believers and unbelievers, pressure in the church, in society, wherever in your job. And it can be so overwhelming. And it can sap you of all your energy. And, and just you become totally, completely tired until you faint and they just want to give up. The Lord is our strength. The Lord is my strength. We must learn in these last days how to really connect to the strength, to the ability, to the divine dunamis. The forces around us are negative. You cannot depend on anything in this world to make you strong, to make you, uh, give you the strength you need. Everything around you is negative. The powers around you is negative. And you have to understand that much of the things around you and people around you, all of them are trying to draw strength from you. Your husband, maybe your wife, children, your, look at if you're a teacher in the, class, in the school, it's like children are buzzing like bees. There's pressure, there's noise, you know, those text messages, those midnight phone calls, people telling you all their own trouble and all their problems. If you don't really have that divine strength and ability you're gonna break they're gonna people are gonna break you down i mean church issues and gossips and worries and anxieties and complainings and bickerings it can wear it can tear you down so we must run to the lord to receive strength and ability to be able to meet in our hour of need hallelujah the lord is my strength the lord is our strength and our ability and then we can continue there in Psalm 18. And uh, 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 in verse 1, David here speaking, uh, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength, my ability, the one that empowers me, strengthens me, quickens me. Wow, the Lord is my strength. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Hallelujah. The Lord is your strength. The Lord is your strength. He is the one that gives you strength to be able to accomplish his will and purpose on earth in and through your life. You cannot cave in now. You cannot give up now. The ability of the Lord, his strength is there. God is there to serve you his energy and strength and force. Even right now as I'm speaking his word to you. This is the word of his power. It is the word of his strength. He is releasing energy and his strength. He's quickening your heart, your mind, your body, your soul. He's cleaning the atmosphere around you where there you are now, right there in your room, right there wherever you are, maybe even in your own car, you're watching on your phone. The Lord is releasing strength right now to break that counter energy, that ne negative forces that are putting pressure on you from every angle. Sicknesses, diseases, cold, cough, all kinds of things. Pressure, sapping your energy, sapping your strength, weakening your mind. That paralyzing force, I command it broken over your life in Jesus' name. The Lord is your strength. You're going to go on. You're going to go forward. You will not abandon what God has begun in your life. You've gone too far to give up now. The Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And this is very important. Psalm 28, and he continues in this way. Psalm 28, we can go ahead and read for verse, um, the verse 8 says, The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. The Lord is our strength. 
He is the one who saves us by his mighty power. Can you imagine the energy, the force, the power that, uh, is, that, is the, that the universe uses every day to keep going around? The entire energy and strength and force that upholds the galaxies, the stars, the, this very earth. The energy, the force. Not talk about the electrical energy or you know nuclear energy and all the, the energy of the sun, of the moon, of the stars, of the galaxies, of the asteroids. Do you can you imagine how much power is needed every day, twenty four seven, to keep the universe going? <laughs> and your heavenly Father holds all this up by the power of His Word. He holds the universe. He sustains it. He keeps it going. None of them is missing. If God can uphold the universe by his mighty power, if he can sustain the universe every day, 24-7, maybe for billions of years, his strength will uphold you. He will sustain you. He will quicken you. He will heal you. When Christ was here on earth, he being the anointed Messiah, the Bible said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Hallelujah to Jesus. With what? The Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. Our king is endued. The power of the highest dwell in him bodily. The strength of the almighty. The force that maintains and propels and, and creates all things is embodied in our Christ. And that Christ is in you. He didn't come inside of you in a weaker form. <laughs> he is in you now. The power of the highest is in you now. You have to learn how to activate the power of God in your life. All the Lord was doing here on earth was imparting strength. He gives strength to the weak. The woman there that was bowed down for 18 years, Satan has bound her, locked her up in weakness for 18 years. The Lord comes in there and says, Woman, thou art loose. By the power of his word, he released power to that woman's body. The woman of the issue of blood, 12 years of homohaging, weakened, paralyzed, unable to move, can't move, weakening every moment of every day. When she came in behind in the crowd, she kept on saying, if I touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made whole. <laughs> and the Bible said, when she touched virtue, strength, ability into her body, receive strength from the living God. Right now, receive strength in your mind. Be quickened by the power of the highest. The ability of the Almighty is be released right now. Because God knows where we dwell. The forces, the powers in this world around us is negative. The devil wants to sap you of strength. He wants to squeeze every ounce of energy out of your being. So you can completely fall flat. And many are, doing, many are falling flat. Many are just succumbing to the sapping strength, sapping force of the enemy and just weakening, paralyzing, I mean completely squeeze you of every ounce of strength. That's what the devil does. He came to steal and kill and destroy. That's what the witches do and the occult forces of hell and the messengers of darkness. All they do is to try to sap you of your energy and strength and ability. And, and much more, they do their best to disconnect you from your source of strength. This is why sometimes many people, when they get offended or angry, the devil wants to get you out of the church. Because he knows as long as you are attached to a living true church, 
or to a genuine servant of God. He knows if he can get you offended for, for any reason. Just get you offended. Oh, that man, why does he have the kind of tie? Oh, why does he have a good shirt? Why does he have a you know, nice car? Why does he drive a good car? It is only, <laughs> it is only silly Christians that envy a real, genuine servant of God. You know, when, when we are growing up in the church, you can look at the preacher, a man of God or whatever. For sure, I know many of them are fake, and they all do everything they do just for their money, for their own destruction too. But I'm telling you, never you jealous a genuine servant of God. Because you cannot endure 10% of what he goes through. If God will let you test, just experience, just 10%, of what any genuine servant of God experiences. You would wish, you would prefer to say, I don't want to have any of those things. I don't want to, I don't, let me just go ahead and stay my little, little <laughs> hamlet and die. I don't want to, I don't want that, I don't want those things to hit me. So, so be very careful about you, jealous in the servant of God, because if God lets you just experience just a little bit of what that preacher goes through every day, just, just one percent. You will, you will regret ever jealous in any genuine servant of God. You think the devil and his gang will just sleep and let you float? No. The Lord is my strength and my salvation. And so all that the enemy does is to try to sap you of strength. Weaken you. Weaken you in your spirit, man. Weaken you in the inside. Draws, pull out your strength and disconnect you to, the, to your source of strength. And, and you can be there and, and just offended with pastor and preacher and church and, and get offended with every preacher you see on television. You think all of us are doing show and making money. Not, not everybody's like that. Anyone that is does that, either he's in an alliance with Satan or he's already destroyed. Nobody takes that position by himself. The enemy will just finish with you and just end with you, destroy your life. Hallelujah. And so you have to understand your source of strength. The Lord is my strength. He's our energy. He's our, the one that empowers us to be able to carry out his mandate, and his walk. The Lord is my strength and my salvation. God upholds all things by the word of his power. And God wants you and I to know his strength. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And verse... Um, um, verse... Uh, in fact, verse 3 says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the Lord of all comfort, who covered us in all our tribulation. Now we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. By the comfort we, we, we ourselves are covered of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation, and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering which we also suffer, or whether we be confident it is for your consolation and salvation. Verse 7, and our hope of you is that for knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we we are pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we Despair even of life. Yeah, some of the some of the modern day preachers and some of the young uh, men and women who are zealous, who see a preacher have a good car, have something good, and all want to run into church, into a ministry, and they start calling themselves prophet and apostle and da 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 da. And I wish they are, but I'm telling you, <laughs> either you are fake, or when 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 it, what it when, what it takes. To stay in that position, come. When the enemy got you in his radar, you would wish you never dared play this game. 
in this end time, you will see many go down before you can open your eye and close. And so, but if you are there by God and you learn and you know that the Lord is your strength, material things are nothing and they are nonsense. Your desire and drive is only to do the will of God and finish his work. I was speaking recently in our church here in Prague. Go ahead, watch us online, oaza.t, oaza.cz, in our church here, overseas church here in Prague. And, and I was sharing here about the prayer of Solomon, how he asked God for wisdom. And then God said, listen, I will not only give you the wisdom, I will give you even what you did not ask for. I will give you wealth, I will give you riches, I will give everything. I will bless you, I bless you. I was telling here in our church, listen, much of what I have today, I mean simple things, I never ask God of them. I never ask God to give me money. Never ask him to give me a house. Never. <laughs> in fact, the first time God told me about a house, I thought it was a devil. I began to buy it. <laughs> Solomon asked for wisdom. When you ask for the heart of God to do his will, to be pure, to be righteous, to be holy, to be an instrument in his hand, to fulfill his pleasure, oh, God will give to you what you didn't even ask for. <laughs> I remember telling God, say, God, don't give me a wife, don't give me a wife, just use me because I don't know how I can get money to take care of a family. Don't give me a wife. <laughs> September 7th, 4 a.m. in the morning, 1993, when I was fasting and praying there in Durbridge, Christ appeared to me and showed me my wife. In fact, he covered her face, showed me my son, and gave me the name of my son. And he gave me the name of the university where my wife was studying. He said, this woman is going to be your wife. She's now in this university. When she gets done with her study, I'll let you know who she is. I said, Lord, I told you, don't give me a wife. I don't have money to take care of my wife. Please, just forget about it. Don't give me a wife. When you ask for the heart of God, he will give you anything. He will give you anything. Much of the genuine men and women of God today, whom God has blessed, none of them ask God for money. Or property, or cars, or houses. No, 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 no. Like Solomon, they ask for wisdom. They say, God, I want to know you. Did, you, did Paul begin to ask for money and wealth to reach his pop, Apostle Paul? Look what he went through. Look what he went through. And any genuine servant of God pursues the heart of God. The Lord Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things will be added unto you. When you get the heart of God, you get everything. <laughs> so here Paul was saying that the suffering, the pressure was unimaginable. Verse 8 says, for we could not, brethren, have you of our trouble, which came upon us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength. In so much that we despaired even of life. Men of God go through this. <laughs> but we had a sense of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raised the dead. You come to a place in your life where you go through some siftings and trials, where you despair of life. But we had a sense of, okay, Okay, now in verse 9 it says, But we had the sense of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which is the dead. God is our strength. He is our ability. He is our deliverer. He is our immediate help in the time of need. Who delivered us from so great a death? And the deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. The Lord is your strength. Don't give up. God's help is coming your way. His strength will rise up from within you. There will be a surge of divine energy and power. Just like he said in, in, in a, a Hebrews chapter 11, that Sarah also received strength. Hebrews 11 and verse 11. Through faith also, Sarah has received strength to conceive seed. And was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. If God called you, if you're a child of God, you are a new creation. 
Christ is in you. God is your father. You must judge God faithful. Trust him with your life. Trust him with that situation. Trust him for strength. Trust him for ability, for power. The Lord is your strength. Sarah judged God, counted God faithful. Through faith, an old, weak, sick, dying woman received strength from God. Today, I say to you, by faith, draw from God the strength you need. An old woman, sick and dying, if she receives strength from Jehovah, the Lord is your strength. The Lord is your strength. The Lord is your ability. And Sarah received strength to conceive seed and gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. <laughs> Why? Because she knew that what God has spoken, He will also do. You have to understand when you are a lion full of energy, the devil will prepare you a beautiful rose, a tempter, a seductress, a woman, a man. The devil knows your strength, he sees that strength and energy. The Celtic people will position a woman or a man along your path to bring you down. With all that strength, you go down. But if you've learned and the Lord has taught you and prepared you, you can stand by the strength of God and live for his glory. The Lord is your strength. Receive strength from the Lord today to conceive and to incubate and to bring forth the vision of God in your life. You will not fail. You will live. You will accomplish the vision. The devil is a liar in your life. <laughs> he who began a good work in you, he will give you the strength you need to finish it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the strength of God be upon your life. Receive in Jesus' name. And I break the power of darkness. Every negative force around your life, I command them destroyed in Jesus' name. I'll be back very soon. Praise the Lord.